Welcome to the So You Want to Get Fat podcast. I am your host, not your typical chef, Brian Sow. And today with me, as always, is my ball of buttery French goodness, Frenchie. Welcome back. How you doing, buddy? Good. Aren't you happy to be home? I am happy to be home. Let me just um, adjust this uh, oh. monitor here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay, I know right, what we're doing today. Before we go there, before we go there, we're, we're, we're going to react to some more uh, Just the Tip Jock a tip. little later. So I talked to Asti uh, and she and gave me the okay. So we're going to. We're going to oh, build this arc. Oh, 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 yes. We have an arc to build. But before we go there, uh, let's talk about where we've been. Uh, no, nowhere special. Well, yeah. We were just in L.A., you know, eating sick-ass hand rolls mm -hmm. from uh, an awesome sushi place, which I don't even remember. Cut to the, the chase. Yeah. We were with Nigel. We were with Nigel. <laughs> we were with Nigel. Yes. We uh, did a podcast with Nigel. Mm. Went very well. It was a lot of fun. Nigel's so much fun. That was your first first time hanging out with him. Yes. Uh, I've hung out with him a couple times before that, but uh, we invited Doesn't him. Doesn't it feel like we've been hanging with him the whole time now? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's like it's yeah. that it's that type of guy. But I think, yeah, he is definitely that type of guy. Every time I hung out with him, it was always like that. But I think it also helped that we had lunch with him before the podcast. You know, broke yes. the ice a little. You okay. Know. But again, it yeah. still felt Yeah, it felt natural. Yeah. There was no awkwardness. And it came out the podcast episode came out surprisingly well, despite us, despite me fucking up the recording process. Two times prior to wait, two times? I think it was two times. Really? I only noticed well, maybe, one. Maybe it was just one. <laughs> maybe it was no, no. I'm thinking three because my phone went off in the middle, oh. and you're like, strike two. two. <laughs> so yeah, Nigel was great. It was good but to guess see. Guess what? Him. It makes for con great content and it fun. Did. The lights flickering the lights on and flickering. off. Yeah, it was natural. It was uh, everything that could stress you out happened. Every it, you are absolutely right. Everything that could stress me out did. So that's the way you guys like. You have to go in thinking everything's going to go wrong, yeah. but fuck it. We're but you know we're plowing through. Speaking of stress, you know I I'm so glad we made that trip. I also stayed in California a little longer than mm -hmm. you went on a vacation and uh, came back to New York. All my stresses were waiting for me, but getting what getting away, going on vacation definitely helped because uh, I feel great right now. Like. Batteries refreshed? Yeah, batteries are refreshed, but also just being able to hang out with cool people, connecting with old friends. I spent a lot of time connecting with- You mean with, I, don't, I don't do that for you? You do. If it wasn't for you blowing on my ember. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that part? Yeah, I remember. You know, I said, now I do. Yes, I said my heart was black and you're like, and I'm there to blow on that ember. <laughs> and then Nigel was- <laughs> So if it wasn't for you- He's got good timing. He does have good timing. If it, if it wasn't for you blowing on my ember, uh, I probably would have completely burnt out. Yes. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, but I, also, I met up with a lot of really cool creative people, um, hung out with Brendan Small of Metalocalypse fame, mm -hmm. Death Clock. Uh, he is someone I highly respect because he wears so many hats. He juggles so many things. He not only does writes the show, produces the show, uh, freaking writes all the music for it and all this stuff. It's just, it was nice to speak to other creative people. Doesn't that show you there. it's possible? 100%. So yes. keep at it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I need that every now and then yeah. to get re-energized, go on vacation. You know, I, I tend to burn myself out and I constantly have to remind myself to take it easy and- uh, Take it easy now. Uh, take it easy now. Uh, that's a Mars, take it easy now. Take it does easy. not go crazy. Take, it, yeah. take yeah. it easy. Take it easy. So it was good. Very good. Was in a dark place, was in a funk, but I'm definitely pretty much out of it, feeling good. And you know, I the sun will come out <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Bet your bottom dollar that. Tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Come on. We needed that song because it fucking rained every fucking minute oh that we gosh, were in LA. In LA, yes, it did God rain every damn day. It. Yeah. And we still walked in the rain to get tacos from it the It couldn't taco get truck. I, could, I just wanted a fucking palm tree. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first taco truck experience in LA. In LA, yes. Yeah. yeah it was Not my first taco truck. Right, right. But first taco truck in LA. Listen, the ones in Austin are comparable, man. Oh yeah? Yeah. I, I would imagine so. Dude. Yeah. Food sure. scene in Austin. That was my first 
taco truck. Yeah. Texas is our next stop. We're going to the Dallas area. Yes. Uh, Frenchie here wants to make I want to shoot some stop. guns. Bigger guns. <laughs> Frenchie here wants to make a pit stop to Austin, which yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, I, I got that baby at home. You know, I yeah, but I want to go wifey. to the comedy club. I want to go to the mothership. I know you want to go to mothership. Yes. I want to see Joe Rogan. I just, you know, <laughs> need to convince wifey that this is a- This uh, is a business trip. <laughs> it is business. Yes, 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 yes. Even though she looks at the bank account, it's like, I don't see you doing much of business, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, well, you, uh -huh. you got to spend money to make money. <laughs> you got to spend money to make yeah. money. Oh, man. But uh, yes, shout out to Nigel. Thank you very much for coming on to the podcast. was an absolute blast. He's, he's a great guest. I would love to have him back on. He'll be back on. Yeah, he'll be back on. You know, I'm pretty sure when he, next time he's in New York. Well, yes, but... Most of the time will not be on camera. Yes, most, yes. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Um, all right. Well, a couple things to shout out before we move on with today's episode. Okay, today okay. is your last chance to pre-order the Handsome Thing tee. Uh, Frenchie, oh, wait, the wrong yeah, t-shirt. Well, Frenchie's got uh, the, the first merch drop from mm -hmm. our podcast, which, uh, again, the reason why you need to be pre-ordering this stuff you is can't get this you, no can't, more. you can't get that you shirt get anymore. It. This is the shirt you want now. Oh, man, look at that handsome thing. <laughs> Restaurant was called Han Song Tang, and Frenchie here thought I was calling him handsome thing. But again, pre-order now. Once they are gone, they are gone for good. Uh, as of filming Shout out this, to my 10%. Shout out to the 10% club. You know who you are. You, them they, ladies. They got to pull their weight even more now. <laughs> the uh, So this Sunday, when this episode comes out, the last chance to pre-order will be the following Sunday. So our podcast comes out on Thursday. Uh, this episode will come out on the 14th. Pre-orders close on the 18th. Okay, so get your pre-orders in by the 18th to snag up one of these handsome thing tees. Thank you very much, you lovely people. And, and while you're keying that keyboard, mm. subscribe to our channel. Oh, oh my gosh, you did it all on your own. You got there all on your own. Yes, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> while you're there, yeah, yeah. Subscribe, subscribe to So You Want to yeah. Get Fat. Leave like, a comment, like, all that jazz. notification bell. This, I think this is the first time we've done it this early in the episode. Well, it the, came to me naturally. Yes, to, I love it. It's, it's, that's a segue, you're right? Learning. Was that a segue? That was a segue. Oh, I'm getting to be the professional. Oh, you're so professional. I can smell it. I can smell the professional. <laughs> no, that's my fart. <laughs> uh, one last thing to shout out. My band, Lost Becomes, will be playing at uh, the Meadows in Brooklyn, May 3rd. Uh, it's going to be fun if you want to watch some heavy metal, mm. want to see me rock out. And guess what? what? Le Rivage is still <laughs> at 340 West 46th Street <laughs> in the heart of New York Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> Uh, the last five minutes have been nothing but plugging you plugging shit we're trying to Should sell we plug nigel no he doesn't need our plug no he doesn't need us <laughs> he, he didn't even post about the podcast no yeah yeah oh no it's okay it's okay, it's okay? no he's do you feel something no no not at all I, I i texted him like yo dude you know uh the podcast is out i sent him the thumbnails like in hopes he would just in case that. just just in case no. but I, I i wasn't gonna take it per and i didn't take it personally no I don't you know, but I'm holding out hope by midnight tonight. To hold it. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, it's all good. Nigel is already he, he is a homie. He's a legit homie, but he is he did us a mass, you know, and he's not, fucking say super favor, busy. He's super fucking busy. Yeah. Like we saw it. Like yeah. he was like he made the time. So he did yeah. a lot. The time at the time was like you could tell that he was like, oh, I got to go. Somewhere. Right. Right. I mean, guys. So like we could have had the podcast going on for yeah. another hour. It was that good. But um, you know, when I saw we we were past the hour mark, I I, I knew I had to cut it off. You know, Nigel's Nigel's busy; he's got yeah. shit going on. Um, okay, so that I is, mean, that's why we had to go there. Yeah, we, exactly. Like you know, we had to go there. So, buddy, tell me, we have some clips to read. Yeah, good to. clips today. Good clips. We have. I know the first one already. Well, here's the who who's on the screen right now? Jacques buddy? Torres. Jacques. Torres. Just the tip. Just the tip. Jacques. Just the tip Tuesday. Yeah, just the tip Tuesday. <laughs> On Tuesday, I only put in the I tip. I only put in the tip. <laughs> so uh, Jacques, amazing chocolatier chef. He's just an amazing chef. Yes. He is the living 
Incarnation of Willy Wonka. Of Willy Wonka. But you know, what I realized as I was pulling up these just the tips. Mm -hmm. uh, the, just segments, the, tip. I, the segments are actually- Our segment yeah, is called yeah, yeah. Just the Tips. So, so Jacques' segments are called Tuesday, Tuesday tips, tips. And we've been calling it, well, just, our segment is called Just the Tip Jacques. Just the Tip Jacques. Yeah. Just the Tip Jacques. Yeah. <laughs> just the Tip Jacques. <laughs> Go easy. Go easy. Uh, there's like three clips we missed. No. I didn't realize we missed that. Are many. we going to get to do all of them back, back to back? We're going to do all three back to back. <laughs> good. Okay. Good, so, good. So, uh, yeah, Jacques Torres, we're uh, we're calling you out, buddy. We're, we're going to react to every single one of your tips. Oh, and we're not going to be kind. We're not going to be kind. <laughs> Definitely not. So uh, this one is, well, let's uh, let him say what it is. Okay. Oh, my gosh. What? Nigel just responded to me. To what? Oh, yeah? Yeah. To, to the to the text I sent him earlier. Wait a second, but I'm like, what are we doing? You got me doing too many things. No, yeah, there's too much going on. Let's let's. Wait, you know, uh, Jacques already got the tip right here to us. We got it. We got to keep going with the tip. We'll see what Nigel says later. Uh, I, I don't hear him. Okay, okay. Me for Tuesday's tip. You need to whip some whipped cream, but you don't have a stand mixer. What do we do? Put a little bit of ice into a glass bowl like that. Leave it for a few minutes. Then when the ball is cold, yes. dispose the ice. Then put the whip into your bowl. Okay, so you know, he's tempering, he's gonna make whipped cream. Mm -hmm. He's tempering the bowl, so he's making it cold. When you say temper, it can mean you're warming something up or you're cooling something down. Can't, I would have just put it in the freezer. Yeah, you can absolutely do that. Actually, Unless you that, can't fit that big bowl that's in a, the That is a big there bowl. There you go, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, I mean, even in the fridge too. Yeah, 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 he's, he, it's home, ho home, yeah. co home cooking. E either way, you wanna, if you're making whipped cream, you want the bowl to be cold. And what is the why? It's because, uh, well, uh, heavy cream has a lot of fat and the colder the fat is, the better it's gonna hold on oh, to Oh yeah, air. it's gonna solidify, it's sorry. Gonna sol solidify. I didn't know you were yeah, I was trying, preferring, trying to get, get you, my attention. Yeah, trying to get you involved. I'm just waiting you for just you to trying stop to get you, and Just so trying you to get you involved in the conversation, but you know, as always, you ignore me and just Okay, and he's the one who showed me like, Putting the whips, multiple whips together. Yes, actually, I didn't know this technique. And I oh, was you like, didn't? No. Oh, this is very yes. old technique. But but at, on the same token, I mean, I barely whip by hand anymore. Always, you know, I barely. Listen, this technique, you could get it whipped up almost faster than a than a mixer. Than a mixer. Oh, yeah. So oh. if you have a little bit to do, yeah. you might as well do that. Right, right, right. Then you have to don't have to bust out the mixer. That's mm -hmm. much. From the whisk, faster the whipped cream going Tree, tree whip. whip. I usually use tree whip. Tree, no tree, 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 tree whip. Tree whip. Uh, we're, are we really gonna dig into Jacques? Oh, I'm digging into oh, him. Digging into you don't have to. <laughs> okay. Cause I'm not afraid of him. Yeah, well, I am. I don't know That's your like problem. That. Yeah, <laughs> You could deal with it. Okay, so he's using multiple whisks. Uh, the more um, bands there are on the whisk, the more air it can incorporate into the heavy cream. That's the why. You see the whipped cream already doubled in volume. This is where I'm going to ask you to pay attention. This is That's what she said. Soft <laughs> peak. You try to pull the whisk and the peak goes. My peak stand. stands. Okay. Soft <laughs> peak. Now if you keep going, the half peak. Okay. And if you but, keep uh, going, but, uh, butter. This is a real French. He has an accent. You know, yes. you're you're a, you're a pseudo. Frenchman, you don't have say that again. You don't have the accent. Come around to this side of the table and say that. <laughs> no, come over here. Just kidding. I'm fucking around. <laughs> Ooh, them eyes, you know. Yeah. When Frenchie gets mad, his eyes like they look kind of like a, they they look kind of like a great white. It's just like pray. <laughs> he just looks at you. <laughs> he just looks at you. I like have been prey. told that yeah. like my eyes are very intimidating. Yes, yes. Like he, he his eyes turn into great white eyes. Or like I've made grown, piranha grown, eyes. I've made grown men cry. Yes, and he just looks at you like a piece of meat. Like he's going to just chew you up and spit you out. Anyway, here's another Jacques. To, to just the tip, Jacques. Um, this is exciting yeah. though, because you bundled them up. Yeah. We saved up. Yeah. Just the tip, Jacques. Just the tip, Jacques. <laughs> Something easy will be a creme brulee. I'm going to elevate that creme brulee and cook it with something called kaltaifi, which is- Not puff pastry, filo dough. I put my pot on top of a scale and I will weigh- Did that cream look curdled? 500 grams of cream, a little bit more than half. Vanilla? I'm going to add well, it's normal a little for, bit of- It was vanilla. lumpy. 
Uh, well, it's normal if, uh, you know, the heavy super creams, cold, super cold. And if the cream sits for a little while, there may be some fat yeah. that gathers at the top. That's normal. So you see, you all notice that he's measuring in grams, mm -hmm. which makes sense. It's by, you know, decimal points. Yeah. It's so much easier. Yeah. It's in increments of 10. Yeah. It's much easier. And you see how he, he weighs by weight. Mm -hmm. So you could have your bowl and on the scale and you can add, you can do your ingredients and you just keep adding by decim by tens right. and you're, it's actually so much easier. You don't have to measure anything. You could just pour well, into one bowl. Well, well uh, he does his recipes by weight. Yes, which is much more accurate. Much more accurate. Much more because accurate, Because yes. baking and patisserie is all, is a science. Yeah. It's more science than cooking. 100%. Um, when you do by volume, so th there's the trick question, right? What's a- uh, A teaspoon. You know, what weighs more, uh, a thousand pounds, uh, a ton of feathers or a ton of bricks? Well, it's the same. It weighs the same. It's the weight is the same. So you can get a bag of sugar from one brand and a bag of sugar from another brand, put it into a cup, measure one cup, doesn't mean the weight's going to be same, the right. same. So the sweetness level can actually be yeah, different. Depending on the size of the granules of sugar. Yep. They're taking up more volume yep. and they're- So I'll give you guys another example. I uh, interviewed for a quality control position at some big like food producer. And uh, one of the questions they had for me was, oh, if you, if uh, we make this sauce and you need, you know, um, like you taste it, it doesn't taste right. What's one of the ways that you can check if it was made properly? And my answer was, well, let, you know, the recipe should show how much weight yields yields from this recipe. And one of the first things I would do, because it's such a big batch, mm -hmm. uh, is weigh it. You know what it's supposed to weigh. And if you put it on the scale and it's off by a pound or- You're missing you know, something. You're missing something. Then the question becomes like, okay, then what did we miss? Something like that, so. I love this stuff. I'm going to use four yolks and about 70 grams of sugar. Half of the sugar goes with my yolk and the other half of the sugar into the cream. Now, mix the first sugar here until it is dissolved, and then we're going to mix everything here until it is nice and fluffy. You want the sugar to start melting into those yolks. Banana. Take a banana and. Banana. I like the, the way he says banana. Of banana. Just the chip, Jacques. Just the chip the of the banana. I'm going to bake my creme brulee. Free heat my oven at 240 degree, but it's a convection oven, so I don't need double boiler. Wait, he said it's a convection uh, oven, so he doesn't so need a double boiler? I didn't hear that. No, that's what I heard just now. Uh, let's keep watching. Right now it's very hot. I'm going to put it, most of it, into the yolk, mix it. So he's tempering there. Yeah, because he doesn't, why he's doing that? Because he doesn't but want to that. shock it and break it. You don't want the eggs to break. Right, right. So if he if he put all that egg into the pot with all that uh, hot, hot cream. It would be overwhelming. Yeah, it would, uh, it could potentially cook it. hot. Yes, yes. So he's tempering it. He put some hot there into we use that word, tempering and, again. Yes, it's hot into cold and then cold back into the mass. Mm -hmm. right. You don't have to heat the cream, but by doing that, the True. cooking mm -hmm. process going to be a little bit faster. To pour the cream over the banana, and it's certainly- That's a big ass creme brulee. 40 minutes to Hell one. yeah. Taifi. Kataifi is shredded filo dough. Easy. Take a piece of foil, and Man, Jacques, a for a clip, Tuesday tip, this is a pretty a big one, right? tip. I was, not, I was like, okay, this is long-winded already. Yeah, yeah, it's a big tip. It's a big tip. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big tip. He's giving us his big tip today. Um, Circle like that, and that's going to be oh. the size of my layers. I almost said concrete. Oh, I just said it. <laughs> as well. Wait, wait. Is is uh? Thick, but is Jacques' wife like showing him the these segments that we're doing? No, no, I don't think so. She should. Wow. Let's try to draw them out, you know, <laughs> come on to the podcast. No. Oh. Like, look at these two clowns fucking. <laughs> fucking with you. <laughs> these fucking clowns well, fucking well, with but you. But then he, he's going to watch these clips and be like, well, Paul, I understand, but who the fuck is that <laughs> ba over there, you know? Ba. 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 Okay, yes. Inside Figure joke. it out. Yeah.
inside joke between Frenchie and I. Okay, this is a veggie wash, but I put butter in it. That's what it is. So I'm just going to spray my butter on top. Now I'm going to get a little bit of- Wait, I know what he's doing. I'm going to put that in the, in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, about 400 degrees. He's making his creme brulee shell see, separately. If I move it, it move a little mm. bit. It's not interesting. Right? Let's keep watching. Liquid. Take it out and put it on the counter and let it cool down. The pastries came out of the oven. They caramelized. Now they have that great flavor. I'm going to take one of those and I'm going to put it here on my plate on the center. And then I'm going to Ooh. cut some strawberries. When my cambodia is a little bit warm, you want to do that the day before. It's nicer when it's a little bit more firm than that. But that should work. So you put your creme brulee. Oh, then you put it's like a... He's doing a, a, a creme brulee Napoleon yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. It's like a deconstructed... Yeah. Well, not even deconstructed. It's But, you know, typically creme brulee is in a ramekin. Guess what, or, Jack? That's not a creme brulee. <laughs> Oh shit! I'm I'm, call, I'm calling them out. Calling them out. Oh. Oh, that's not a creme brulee. Yeah. Oh snap! It's not. Sorry, <laughs> it's not. Well, what does it say here? Uh, banana. Yeah, he did call it banana creme brulee. It's not a creme brulee. Your creme brulee. That on top. And here you go. You have a delicious dessert for Christmas, for Thanksgiving. Enjoy. Enjoy, and I hope that helped. That was a big Bonjour, tip. That was a big right? tip. A very big tip. But we yeah. got another tip. You got another yes. tip? You ready, No, buddy? we can't take two tips at the same time, though. No, we're actually going to take three tips today from Jacques. Oh. Taking three tips from Jacques. Well, Told look you at we, that black uh, we missed mixer. A, yeah, we missed a few uh, episodes. I like his voice. It's a Sorry, soothing, so, right? Was he mean in the kitchen? Was he tough? Was he... No. No? No. Is, is he like this? He's like with? this. Yeah? Yeah. I guess someone who like works around chocolate like that all day, I guess, just mellows you out. Yeah, well, you're on all that sweetness. It kind yeah. of, you know, absorbs into you. Yeah. Or I would expect it to like tweak you out, you know? No. You know, too much sugar? No. no. I was surrounded by chocolate all the time. Oh, goody desserts. I, I was the happiest. I miss working in a pastry kitchen. That's where I started. I miss it a lot. Yeah. You get to work in an air conditioned kitchen. Yeah, yeah, you also get to work in air conditioned. You see, everybody else is sweating and you're like, hey, guys, how you doing? And they're like, uh, uh, what? What? <laughs> and why does it need to be air conditioned? Because oh, because you temperature control is of the most importance with when, pastry. With pastry. Yeah. Oh my God. And even more so for chocolate. Yes. Way more so for chocolate. You don't chocolate. want chocolate to melt. No, no, no. We don't like these. And you don't want anything to sweat. Mm. I have some cream that's going to be out of shelf life by tomorrow. <clears throat> so I'm going to make butter. So just put the cream. Oh, that's a sad and black. And then make that's a sad and black mixer. Cream. That's like a sexy. modern. Yeah. That's sexy. I like that. No, I like Guga's I'm orange one. Add it mm. to it. So the whipped cream now is about the same consistency than this one. So I'm going to add everything together. There is no sugar into my whipped cream. I'm going to keep whipping. So by now the cream is about pretty hard and stiff. After a few minutes, as you can see now, the cream is very In a hard. minute? In a minute. <laughs> In a it's minute. over. <laughs> oh, it's a quickie. <laughs> So wait, a, folks, you you could butter. add sugar in the beginning if oh, you want butter sweet butter, mm -hmm. and you could add salt, salt mm -hmm. and it'll give you that extra friction too to make yeah. the butter. Yep, yep. So when you take cream and you continue to agitate it or whip it, all those free floating granules of fat submerged in the uh, solution starts to bind together, and then that's why you get butter. So, and then you're left out. You're left with. Um, uh, uh, butter and whey, which is the byproduct. Already form its moisture. You can lessen. You can hear the water splashing oh. all around, and the butter is coming together. This is butter, fresh yeah. butter. Press the is butter that like that. On his video? Yeah, that's on his video. Remove the liquid, and you can put that. Living in New York. In container. Living in New but York, yeah, you're always going to get the silence in the right. background. So, because he said I was about to expire, you, yeah. you save it. So then people would say, well, is it going to expire anyway and turn into butter? No, mm -hmm. because you're getting rid of right. the product that's going to expire. Right. The butter, the fat itself yes. will hold yeah. much longer. Well, that's why you can preserve things in fat. Right. Right. Because. Uh, um, so if you squeeze it, make sure you get all that water right. uh, way out, yes. you know, 
And then you can technically even freeze it. Yeah, hundred percent. So you're good to go. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah. So uh, bacteria needs three things to survive: oxygen, a food source, and water. So you saw he got rid of the whey, the water. Uh, yes, fat can be a food and source. And poor decisions is another. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it. We, we're fully caught up on a just the tip, Jacques. Just the tip, Jacques. But there is one more thing I want. Just the tip, Jacques. <laughs> just the tip. Just the tip. Just the, just the tip. <laughs> so uh, there is one more Jacques clip I wanted to react to because I thought it was pretty funny. Okay, this yeah. is oh, so this is a fourth. Yeah, this is a fourth. Is it the same it's thing? Not a, it's, it's not. It's not a, a just tip? the tip. Yeah, what is it? It's what well, watch. Did you find something from a long time ago? No, it's actually from today. <laughs> oh, okay. And I was like, ooh, this is cool. This would be something cool to show everybody. Oh, oh, actually, uh, Jordan, you're definitely going to have to replace the audio for this. Please. So I definitely get one of these every year. Yeah, dude. I, I love, uh, this is, the art of chocolate making is just so sick. That machine is so cool. So he's going to mount it onto this machine that keeps it moving. moving. So it's all the... Chocolate is going to solidify uniformly, uniformly inside. Yep, yep, yep. Did you see me do that? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? I'm waving. I'm going to float like you're going to do a magic trick. Like I'm a beauty queen. <laughs> Are you centered? Yeah, I'm centered. Oh, okay. I, am, I, I am now. Yep. Yeah, I'm centered. <laughs> this is what I wanted to stop on. <laughs> can, you, can, we, uh, can we screenshot that? Jo Jordan, can you like zoom in on that face right oh, there? Boy, that's a little scary. <laughs> yeah. Wait, the teeth match. <laughs> the teeth match. You said it, not me. You said it, not I me. I could say it. I'm not afraid of him. Okay. Oh, man. That was, uh, that was good. Jacques Torres always makes me feel good. All right, buddy. Well, uh, let's see what Nigel texted. Okay. He, he may be like... Uh, Fuck off, fuck face. No. Oh, no. Okay. Just saying. Nigel says, oh, he said, halfway through it, pretty entertaining so far. Ha ha. I'll share it on my Insta later. Yeah. Oh. Did he? Yeah, he did. That's what he oh. said. Yeah. Oh. Very nice. He's redeemed himself. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't watch this episode. He's like, those motherfuckers. <laughs> those I those ungrateful just, fucks. Yeah, those it's like, how'd they be expecting me to post about their little podcast? Anyway. Thanks, but, buddy. you know, high tides raise all ships. Indeed. You know? I do agree with that. I do agree with that. Dead air. Dead right. air. Dead air. Dead air. <clears throat> well, one of the things Nigel brought up during uh, the podcast was how uh, I beat a dead horse uh, with Cooking with Jack. We reacted to so many Jack clips. Well, Oh, my God. That's what you're writing up? No, you beat a dead horse with. Hi, Hi. I'm Chef <laughs> Brian <Zell> from Beepa. <laughs> Winner of Beepa. Okay. No. And you know what another one is? What? Now, don't take it the wrong way, but you keep, like, every time there's an excuse, like, oh, well, we, well, we also have to work in a restaurant. And, like, you always bring up the restaurant, like, as, like, why we can't do shit. Yeah. Oh, that's factual. <laughs> yeah, but I, in my head, I was like, oh, I'm going to take a drink every time he says that. Uh, it was, like, six times. Really? Yeah. Was it? Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. So, August the Duck has brought to light this clip, which many people. And how, how old is this? Very old. This clip is actually very old? Yeah. Yeah, so how sorry. come we didn't know about this before well, we even- I told you about it. Many people DM'd me this clip and I watched it. And that's why I never felt bad about reacting to him and basically shitting all over him because Ooh. of this clip right here. Okay. And what that DM said was not an exaggeration. You're about to watch a clip from, I guess, what was supposed to be some weird, like, religious parental podcast, where Jack admits, amongst many other things, to trying to kill his son. I'm, I'm not joking, okay? I'll let you listen. This is really, this is the key part here. We did a great job parenting. We didn't do the best job. Wait, we did a great one. We did a great did job at the time. Yeah. There's, you know, unfortunately with Jack already, right off the bat, yeah. there's, there's a lack of education and already and discipline and on all fronts. Yes. <laughs> the other side who, uh, she's a totally sweet person, but was not strict at all. He had carte blanche. So every weekend it was carte blanche. And every Monday or Tuesday, we were hammering our kid, to get him back into shape. Right. By the time Wednesday, Thursday rolls around, 
he's finally our child again. Friday comes, she picks him up. And wait, is he talking about you? It ex-wife or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah. Well, uh, August the Duck was going. So <laughs> essentially, the assumption is because they don't give the full background. Uh, this he's talking about his ex-wife or you know baby mama, and uh, I'm assuming that his son lives with them, Jack and whoever right. that lady is, and then on the weekends goes with his mom. It was it was rough, and he starts because he couldn't handle it. I was Mr. Strict Parent, mm -hmm. and she just didn't do anything, and it was it was it just messed him up, mm -hmm. and so he starts having rage mm -hmm. issues. So. Uh, so we had to deal with that, and as he got into his teen years, um, he had a great home life. He had everything his heart desired. He never went without. Okay, so I want you to really, really remember that this guy said his son had a good home life, great home life even. Okay, if you just, have to just say don't it. forget that, all right? I wanted, I wanted him to, at age 13 to start his own company. We talked about it. We want to encourage him to start early. We don't want him just wasting money and blowing money. We mm -hmm. want him to earn money and, and get excited about something. It's right. his. And so by the time he's 18, he would have it, something that's already substantial, right? So so we got him into building computers and and having rage issues and... Okay, so this is Jack's story. Up until this point, apparently Garrett started to puff on the Mary Jane, and it gives him rage issues, according to Jack, which uh, I don't know if you guys have ever met a stoner. I have. Got lots of friends who enjoy the occasional puff, okay? Rage issues and pot don't really go together. I'm going to assume... I do the weed every day. Break. I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely calms you down. It calms you down. And like, if you, if you have martial artists and everything they're big yeah. into weed because it just yeah. makes them mellow and yeah. like they're in it for the you know there's no rage and while they're yeah. you know practicing and because yeah. you know rage could go wrong road rage goes wrong mm -hmm. rage goes wrong yeah but weed does not cause rage sorry yeah. devil's lettuce don't give you the rage it's devil's lettuce yeah, devil's lettuce Oh, is that an old timey? That's an old timey thing. Holy yeah. shit! Age <laughs> issues were actually because of Garrett's home life. Obviously, I can't say that for certain, but I think it's a pretty good guess. Not because he was smoking weed. Now mm. we're about to get into the uh, really, really heavy part of this, and I just want you guys. Is that to the really new wife? Is that the trophy wife? Before I guess. going into this, before you try and back him up and say that, oh, maybe he's right about his son. Maybe his son was really doing this. Maybe it was because of this or that. If this guy is willing to admit what he's about to admit, not. Not only to other it's people, but to the entire recorded. internet, to anybody who wanted to click on this video and Dude. admit it proudly. What kind of things do you think might have gone on behind closed doors? What kind of things is he not so proud I agree. Mm -hmm. What stuff could he be hiding about his parenting? Just a thought. There were two times once he put his hand on me and, he, and it wasn't like he pushed me, but it was in an aggressive way. Mm -hmm. And I took him down to the ground. I threw him down to the ground. And then the second time, he put his hands on Tammy, pushed her up against the door, and I took him to the ground, and I was going to kill him. I was choking him out, and I hadn't fought since school. The only time you stop fighting in school is the principal's coming. But this was the moment I was choking him and screaming in his ears, you don't ever touch a woman. You don't ever touch a woman. The top of my voice, I was choking him so hard, his nose started to bleed. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And mm -hmm. now you know why I do not feel bad about reacting to this guy's shit. <laughs> no comment, really? That's, it's, it's fucked up. He's a piece of shit. He's a piece of shit. Now, there's other, I, I think, I think this uh, pretty much says it all. I'm going to finish that clip. But, um, you know, he, there's apparently uh, this. I, I I can't say for sure, but allegedly the, there is are. Is he conscious of the, what he said here? What did what? The, how did he try to explain this away? That I don't know. Damn. That I don't know. But before I get on to the next part of this, allegedly he's part of some uh, Facebook groups or something like that where he says some very unsavory things, teetering on the edge of genocide. So wait, Jack? Yeah, Jack. Yeah. So exactly what it is, I don't know. I haven't seen it for himself for myself. So August the Duck. So he's a piece of the, shit at home. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and outside the house. But this drama gets so crazy because apparently somebody reached out to August the Duck's sister based saying, uh, if you don't take down this video, I'm gonna dox you. Remember, we covered doxing 
right. where they reveal your personal information and where you live and shit. Yes. Yes. So somebody anonymously emailed his sister, I guess couldn't find his information, but contacted his sister and said, yeah, take down this video. Otherwise, I'm going to dox you. Now, no one can prove if it was Jack or not. Even August the Duck was saying uh, it could be a crazy fan of Jack's who's just right. trying to come to his rescue. Nobody knows for sure. But that happened. And then uh, a day later, apparently Jack, well, not apparently, factually, Jack responded and said, that was not me. I did not dox, yada, yada, yada. But yeah, this is uh, getting pretty, pretty ugly. So we don't need to waste another minute on Jack. Or can we? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, now I'm just going to, if you show me a Jack video now, I'm just going to be just. Debbie Downer? Cruel. Yeah. I, I, I just find it kind of crazy that this guy just keeps getting traction. Uh, you know, not necessarily good traction, but, you know. You know how much I love August the Duck. So yeah. it's kind of cool that he brought this to light and showed people who Jack really is. Right. But the fact that there is somebody out there who's willing to dox August the Duck to get this video taken down. I mean, they clearly know that it's fucked up. But why would you like? Why would you say something like that on the internet? That means he's he's okay with saying it. Just uh, honestly, just tells me that he's done worse. Hundred percent. That if he's okay to admit to that, yeah, he's done worse. Yeah. I mean, you touched on that, right? Mm -hmm. No, you touched on that. Oh, I did. Yeah, I said it already. Yes. Oh shit! <laughs> now I'm repeating myself. Yes, yes, oh one. my god, the Alzheimer's really coming that in. That or uh, Jacques' tips really touched you hard. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. no, no, no. no. This is no good. So to make things better, I prepared a Tom Segura clip. Oh, I, lo <laughs> I love me so, some Segura. And I found this other one which is like also like totally innocent. It's this young girl <laughs> who does like dad jokes. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't rise and shine. <laughs> I caffeinate and hope. <laughs> you want the comments say under this? <laughs> awesome. Blow up my horse can like a balloon. Oh, look, oh, 5,512 5, yeah. likes. Yeah, hilarious. Fist me with both hands. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I've never heard that I before. I mean, but this poor girl. like no, she's not. She is not like this at all, you know? What's with all the degenerate comments? This white girl literally does nothing. Pee on my meals. <laughs> fart in my eyes. What is wrong with people? Oh my god. Fart. <gasps> Dude. People are ridiculous on, yes. on the internet, though. They like, are ridiculous. There's, I'm, there's too much... Liberty to people are brave behind a screen. Oh yeah, on a keyboard. Yes, yes they like are. I said it's like <sighs> if they said ten percent of this shit to your face, they'd be knocked the fuck out. Oh, hundred percent. That needs to come back. More people need to get knocked the yeah, fuck out. Yeah. Some people need to lose their teeth. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was a kind of a cool thing. This is uh, I, I I guess we can't count this as the not so current news, but it just popped up on my Instagram feed. I thought it was mm -hmm. cool. It's on the page. Wealth. Uh, it it's never too late to start a business. Okey doke. Right. So some interesting facts. Colonel Sanders started KFC at sixty two years old. And how long did it take to become successful monetarily? Oh, that's, a, that's a good. That's a good question. Because if he started at 62, it wasn't as successful at 62. Right, right, yeah. That is 100% factual, but the fact that Great started, legacy. Great legacy. But, but uh, when you're dead, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Walt, uh, Walton, Walmart, 44. Started Walmart at 44. Okay. Ray Kroc, McDonald's. Ooh, asshole. He is a bit of an asshole, but he's, you know, he got into it at 52. Yeah, he robbed it. He, he did rob it. I guess it's never too late to rob something, guys. Yeah. Yeah. At all. Oh, at uh, all. At all. Oh, Adidas. Adidas uh, aren't 48. you a fan of Adidas, Brian? <laughs> I am a fan. Look at your creator. Uh, let's, let's yeah, move, yeah. Are you a fan favorite Jesus of Adolf? Christ, his name is Adolf. <laughs> well, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> Christian Dior, 41. Yeah, I'm not a, I don't think I'm a big fan of Christian. I think during World War II that I have some issues with. Oh, really? Yeah. I think so. Oh, yeah. Not I'm not hundred percent. Oh, another piece of shit. Now look at this guy. <laughs> Henry Ford. Yes. 40. So uh, he was Henry Ford was definitely on 
Team uh, Germany. Oh, was he? Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Fucking, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Well, uh, now you make me not want to see the rest of these because I'm like, oh, isn't this Am inspired? I ruining all of them yeah, for you? Yeah, you're totally ruining it because I'm like, isn't this very, this, you know, I'm going to be 40 soon and yeah, it's never too late to build a successful company. Now you're like, Adolf, and you like Adidas. Oh, this guy you're totally supports. I like Adidas too. When I was a kid, I used to be so proud that of that it, I thought that it meant all day I dream about sex. Well, that that's a corn song. Yeah. The band Corn. Is that is that uh, about I don't Adidas? know if that's where it came out. No, but the song is called Adidas. Well, so. when what year is Corn? Uh late 90s. Yeah, I knew I said that before. Oh, okay. All right. Red Bull that was your uh, No, no. I I I had to stop looking at that clip. I, I was afraid who we were going to see go, next. Go 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 back. Go back. <laughs> no, I already Let me ruin of... everybody for right, you. You want to ruin everybody? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's ruin everybody. Let's ruin everybody. <laughs> let's uh check this out. So, uh we have uh Henry. For All right. Red Ch Bull. Chalio, don't I I don't know how to pronounce that. All right. He started Red Bull at 53. Holy Good shit. For him. All right. Good for him. Uh, very, very nice dark hair there. I don't know. That must be a dye job. Uh, Bernard Marcus, Home Depot, 49. Did he start out as one of the greeters? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So guys, uh, there you go. It's never too late to be a piece of shit and start a company when you're old as fuck. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I guess I'm- I, Or steal I, someone's business. Or steal someone's business. I guess I'm halfway there. I am a piece of shit, so. Why? Because I keep showing you Jack content. No, we're not making money. We're not a business. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have nothing to worry I about. To worry about. <laughs> oh man! I'll let you know. <laughs> you'll, oh, you'll, you'll, yeah, yeah. You'll you'll keep me in check if I uh, if I if we, if we make money, then you uh, I'll uh, there'll be more allowances. Okay, 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 okay. Wendy's is under fire recently. Tell me why. Wendy's the burger chain. How do you like Wendy's? I haven't been in a long last time they I went to Wendy's they had a salad buffet. Wow, that is a long time ago. Holy shit. With a fixings bar. A fixings bar, yes. A fixings bar. Fixins bar. Fixins fixins bar. <laughs> uh yeah, I haven't had Wendy's for a long time either. Uh but they I even remember the location of it. Oh really? Where it is, is it? Kingston, New York, upstate New York. Oh, okay. Okay. And they had the fixins bar. They had a fixins bar. So Wendy's is under fire right now because they want to start using uh, dynamic pricing on their menus. What does that mean? So you know how Uber charges a little more when it rains? Oh, what? your surge pricing? Yes. yes. Oh, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's watch this. Because thing. every place there's a Wendy's, there's like 20 options right next to it. Yes. So let's, good luck with but that. Let's watch this clip from CBS Evening News. In tonight's Money Watch, the price of a burger and fries could be going up, depending on what time of day it is. That's right. Fast food giant Wendy's says it will introduce surge pricing in 2025 during its busiest hours. Well, it's getting a frosty reception as CBS is doing <laughs> No shit, Kendall. Sherlock. Companies are squeezing consumers. Tonight, food is taking a bigger bite out of shoppers' incomes, the most in three decades. And be prepared to shell out more. You'll never guess what we're doing to the Baconator. Wendy's announced it'll start testing dynamic pricing on digital menu boards next year, a form of surge pricing like Uber and Lyft. Artificial intelligence will- Let me tell you what's not going to happen. That this is not going to happen. Well, there's more. Let's there's keep more. watching. And determine whether to raise prices based on demand, location, and time. Wendy says, for example, it might suggest a cool frosty on a warm summer day. This will allow us to be more nimble and flexible with pricing. Why introduce this when customers can easily just go somewhere else? Clearly, the company is trying to find ways to boost its share price and improve its profit margins. But it could come at the expense of losing some faithful customers. Cereal! Beyond the burgers, Kellogg is also under fire after its CEO suggested consumers struggling with inflation could eat cereal for dinner. If you think about the cost of cereal. <laughs> CEO of, of Kellogg's said to battle food inflation or inflation in general, eat cereal for dinner. How fucking out of touch is that I mean, that I've shit? done that a million times I mean, growing I mean, up. I mean, yeah. But many of us do it very gladly. I can tell you my favorite food in the world is a bowl of cereal. But dinner I, substitute? No. No, 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 no. But how out of touch is that? How many millions of dollars does that CEO make oh, to fucking fucker. 
Motherfucker. His ki- his fucking kids aren't like they're, having cereal. They're not for dinner. eating that product. I right, can tell you that because right. he knows what goes into Kellogg's. <laughs> it's banned in yeah. like in Japan and in France. No shit. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, Frosted Flakes is banned. Mm. It's got. That's a big no-no. Mm-mm. No bueno. For a family versus what they might otherwise do, that's going to be much more affordable. Backlash online yeah. was what swift. The- this fool making four million bucks a year. You think he's feeding his kids cereal for dinner? That's where I got that line from. Dude. I did watch this clip earlier. Okay. Yeah. It's a tough sell because cereal prices have surged more than 25% compared to pre-pandemic. <laughs> Well, it rings a little bit like the French Revolution. Let them eat cereal. And it does sort of... Oh, fuck. Wait, is that true? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let them eat cake. Oh. <laughs> I mean, which is not true. Yeah, it was yeah. made up. But that's yeah. famous fr- fr- uh, French Revolution, you know, uh, mythology is mm-hmm. uh, let them eat cake is Marie Antoinette said that. Oh, I did not know Before that. they chopped off her head. Her head. <laughs> off with her head. I read the room very well. Families are really struggling to afford bringing food to the table to feed everyone at the table and now they're suggesting cereal for dinner it just seems like he's missing the point yeah oh dude does he miss like how how do you become the ceo and be so wrong Mm -hmm. dude well that clip came out like three days ago right well guess what wendy's had a comment to make Let me see, let me see, let me see. Yes, dynamic pricing. Uh, dynamic this, pricing. That's what they're calling it. Uh, this would change the price of menu items. Shout out to Vlad Dudier. He actually did a segment on Mission Sandwich Social when we opened. Who, who? Vlad, the guy who, the, the CBS host. Just oh, okay. Now, yeah. Oh, that guy? Yeah. He came to the shop. We played some guitar, you know? Oh, yeah? He's a musician? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's good. It's actually pretty good. Who was it? Was he slapping the bass to your guitar? Was that? Was he slapping the bass to your guitar? Slapping the bass. <laughs> No. Slapping the bass. Slapping the bass. Depending on demand, after a lot of backlash from folks, the fast food chain said its intention is only to lower Bullshit. prices. Bullshit! <laughs> <laughs> Merde. Time. I'm sorry. I, now, do they, now that they say this, they have to follow through? Oh, probably. Or cancel the whole, the program entirely. Yeah, they're going to cancel the they're whole gonna thing. They're going to cancel. They're the not going to. This is this. They're is, not going to lower. You, they never go backwards. Yeah, they never go backwards. No, they're totally going to backtrack on. It. It's not going to work. And also, uh, I always felt that um, you know, lower pricing during slower times it helps, but it doesn't at the same time. Like yes, you know, happy hour is pretty normal, right? The idea is oh, you charge a little cheaper during these right. slow times. But at the end of the day, most people are working at those times. So there's only a limited pool mm-hmm. of people that can actually take advantage of it. So I've never been a huge proponent of heavily discounting something for the sake of trying to get customers. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it You're works. You're just creating more labor to, to create for evening out. You're not making, you're not, right. you're not. Right. I don't I, I never found it worth it. Like you're just Because if you're going to be that yourself. busy that you're going to make money, then right. put the real price on. Exactly. Exactly. No. Um, not to say I don't like taking advantage of a happy hour deal and stuff like that. I don't, you know, I don't dislike those things. But from well, a business usually perspective. Usually the happy hour is particular items. Right. Then it's a way of getting you there. And then you'll eat other things right. that are not on the happy hour. Right. And they make money that way. Right, right. Well, you that's know? the theory. You know? I don't think it always Or you could be with out. a group of people and like, I'm definitely not drinking happy hour drinks. It's usually just, you know, fruit juice and yeah. sugary contents and very little alcohol again i'm just saying as a consumer i like it but as a business owner it's just not something i ever really bought into my past restaurants always had happy hour but a couple small bites but that was about it i never invested heavily into it Mm. so all right buddy well what else you got i have a couple more clips Mm -hmm. uh one of which let's change this screen this clip was sent to me by Amy Ernst. She knows me well. Amy Ernst is uh, one of the managers at my shop. Mm-hmm. She also assists us with some small things here and there. Okay. And uh, yeah, I thought you would like this too. Okay, you 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 know I love this and I would eat it. But my first impression is, that's how we burn. <laughs> That's what we look like. That's what we look like if we were to get cooked. Yeah. Mm. And right. A big piece of like that is a little too much. Yeah. 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 Now, uh, I would totally eat the eat fuck out of that, did, though. Did you just fat shame us? 
fat shameless? Yeah. Oh. I think you fat shameless. Uh, you look like a, that you're, you're implying that we look no. like this pig when we If you cooked. cook a human body, that's the result. Oh, oh, right, right. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's. Uh, Don't ask me why I know this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. And then. Uh, I have a sister who works in the ER. Oh, man. Nurses. Like Dude. people who work in the ERC. Shit. Some shit. Holy fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Out of anal cavity <laughs> searches. A lot of Is tips. The, a lot of tips. So I had a, I had a friend. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and and he as um you know on on the road to becoming a doctor, yeah. you have to pay your dues in All the right. emergency room, right. and you have to do large stints, and right. you know you have to do graveyard shifts, and nothing good happens after midnight, right? Yeah. And I would ask him like, oh, like what's the worst? You know, what's the most? common thing that happens is it gunshot wound is it fights and he says no reattaching penises i was like what the fuck <laughs> what yeah that's, that's like that, the, that happens often enough uh, too often he says yep oh i guess like a but people don't talk about it yeah 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 you know holy fuck yeah but then again this question was posed during the 90s 80s and late no 90s mm -hmm. so maybe hopefully things have changed <laughs> Now, now, uh, now it's um, you know cavity uh, extractions. Oh gosh! All right, buddy. Well, that's all the time we I, have I, for I today. I swear to God, I tripped and I fell on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a tip. I thought it was just a tip. <laughs> Wait till next week when we show you more of uh, just the tip, Jacques. Yes, yes. Just a tip, Jacques. Just a tip. <laughs> All right, buddy. This is all the time we have for Wait, today. Wait, no, no uh, viewer, no comments. No, no, no questions today. No questions. No, no, no. I, because I just posted today, so we have questions for next week. Oh, but yeah. that's my favorite part. I know it's your favorite part, but and you had no. none of it. I, I don't. I, okay, you ask me a question. You want me to ask you yeah, a, ask question? Me a question? Okay. Now you put me on the spot. I, I don't know what to ask you. We have editing. Don't worry. Yeah. Think about it. <laughs> Okay, see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> Put me on the fucking spot. I'm you don't like, have anything? I, I don't have anything. And I, now I feel like it's forced. Yeah, now it's forced. So yeah, now, now we it's forced. Now we quit. No, no. <laughs> and now everybody's like left wanting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there is one story that I think you should tell. Which one? Which is the, uh, the day when the, your first day of work and what slammed next to you as you got oh, out my of my first day coming to work yeah, here yeah what slammed next to you as you got out of the subway uh a body <laughs> <laughs> a bodily a body was thrown off a roof and smacked by right. some what like gangsters or something oh he got thrown off the roof oh jesus christ oh yeah and how old were you i was 12 uh summer of 12 i was gonna be 13 in july so it was like that End of school year. Yeah, and this was in Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, it was right here. It was right here. I was coming here. <laughs> Did you cry? Did you like freak no, out? No, I was like, I the 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 impact. His lungs came out of his mouth. Oh jeez. And that's I was like trying to figure out what that was. Right, right. Because I'd never seen oh, something. That, like, that's what you were wondering when you. I saw was looking at it trying to figure out what that was. Yeah. <laughs> You guys heard it here first. And Frenchie is questioning life's uh, and that's not, and most that's not serious my, questions. And that's not my only story of a, somebody being thrown off a building. Do you have another one? I got three more. Oh, jeez. Uh, uh, two from this building right next door. <laughs> and one on 86th Street. Well, are you going to tell any of them? One on 86th Street? Yeah. Ooh, it's a little bit of a Debbie Downer. Oh, is it? Oh All right, yeah. Maybe let's not Debbie down today. No, but it's, uh, it's our, a our, our, our hours up. We got more stuff to film. Oh yes, yeah. it's an interesting story though. It is. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to save it for the next pod? We'll save it for the next. Okay. One. Let us know in the comments if you guys want to hear this next on on the next pod. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm thinking of the meth head who fell out of this building twice. <laughs> That's a good story. <laughs> well, uh, all right. Are, are you able to share it? Is oh, it, this uh, one? No, the other one's uh, a, a better one. But this okay. one was just hilarious. It's like a crackhead who used to live in this building. Uh -huh. And he used to live with his lover. Yeah. And his lover threw him out the window twice. And he survived because there, used, there was an awning in the front. Yeah. And he fell on the awning.
<laughs> so he survived that one. And then he Come went to back. Lower Box, 340 <laughs> West 46 this Street was in the, the heart of yeah. This was the 80s. But he went back and he got thrown out again. Wait, the same like by the same the same within couple. Within the same day? No, this oh. was like after. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and the awning survived both times. Oh yeah, awnings are pretty. Yeah, but yeah. it was it's pliable enough. I mean, yeah. the awning had to be replaced, right, but right. it saved his life oh, twice. All right, everybody. Well, you know, uh, you want to see some action? Come to Low Ravage in the heart of New York, Times yeah. Square. Yes, Hell's Seen Kitchen. a lot of dead bodies in Hell's Kitchen. Yes. All right. Well, that is all the time we have for today because we got some more stuff to do, buddy. But uh, good to see you. We had so much fun in LA. Yes, we did. And uh, we definitely got to do more of those. We got You had more fun. I was a little under the weather. Oh, yes, you were under the weather. But, but I, I, pull, I pulled it together, you right? You did pull it through. You were not being a little bitch. No, I don't want no bitch. No, no, no bitch. You are no bitch. No, no. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did making it. And remember, don't be afraid to fail because it can only make you stronger. With that said, I'm Chef Brian Sal, not your typical chef. Au revoir, merci. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> we'll see you really soon. Bye.